there. One of my favorite places is Emancipation Park in Kingston. When I'm here, especially on a sunny day, I'm reminded that one of the most enjoyable things about living in the Caribbean is the climate. Yes, we complain a bit sometimes when it gets really hot, but even when it's 93 degrees in the shade, I'm sure most of us would rather live in the tropics than some place where temperatures are low for several months of the year. Temperatures in Jamaica generally range between 20 to 33 degrees Celsius all year round except for the months of December to February when temperatures can sometimes drop significantly over a day or two. The fluctuation in temperatures that is seen between December and February result from the impact of cold fronts. But that Arctic blast is still surging southward and just uh, riding along that jet stream. It's dipped all the way to the south and it's allowing that cooler air to funnel on in. It does seem a bit odd to be talking about cold fronts on a sunny day but I'd rather be talking about them than trying to keep warm. The term cold fronts is a little bit of a misnomer though because there is actually warm air involved. I'm sure you're curious about how cold fronts happen, so let's investigate how these systems are formed. There are some very good geography resources to be found on the internet. Use them to supplement the information you receive in class and what is present in your textbooks. Here's what I found out about cold front formation. Tropical areas have warmer air and areas further from the tropics experience cooler air conditions. This is due to the angle at which the sun penetrates the atmosphere to reach Earth's surface. As a result of the tilt of the Earth, areas further from the equator have the sun's rays spread out further from the equator making them cooler than equatorial regions where the sun's heat is more direct. The air surrounding the earth doesn't stay still. As it moves, warm and cold air will interact with each other. When they come together, it is difficult for them to just blend into each other particularly if they are strong systems. Cold air is denser than warm air and as a result, it is heavier. Warm air is lighter and less dense. When the two air masses converge, the cold air stays close to the ground and the warm air is forced to rise over it. This means warm air which is coming off the sea and has a lot of moisture in it, rises, cools and condenses very rapidly, forming deep clouds. Strong thunderstorms, sometimes accompanied by lightning, are produced. The boundary at which the two air masses meet is called a front or a frontal boundary. I contacted the meteorological division to get some more information about cold fronts. Why is it that some cold fronts bring with them much colder conditions than others? 
Well, it's helpful to start with an explanation of what a front is. Fronts are simply the boundaries between two air masses of different temperature. If warm air is moving towards cold air, it is a warm front. These are shown on weather maps as a red line with scallops on it. Now, if cold air is moving towards warm air, then it's a cold front. Now, some cold fronts are colder than others because as we spoke about, the cold fronts are really determined by the air masses that are in them. So some air masses might be colder than others. Do cold fronts affect the entire Caribbean region? Well, typically, cold fronts usually affect the northern sections of the Caribbean, but from time to time, even areas as far south as Barbados and Trinidad, they do get one or two cold fronts in a season. The next time a cold front rolls around, I am sure you won't be shy about passing on a few facts to the people in your circle. 